The century-old socialist experiment known as the kibbutz elicits images of Jewish pioneers pitching tents, farmers tilling fields, and folks living in rural utopia. But the reality today is much more complicated. In the late 1970s, the utopian dream began to deteriorate. Israel's first non-labor government came into power and the status of the kibbutz shifted as the country began to look towards the privatization of once national institutions. For many kibbutz communities, it was the beginning of the end. As of 2010, about 190 of the more than 270 kibbutz communities were privatized, while 65 remained communal, with nine looking to integrated approaches, according to the kibbutz movement. Today, there are several that have survived the crisis through innovation and reinvention. An hour and a half north of Tel Aviv, Kibbutz Mishmar Ha'emek, a historic flagship of the kibbutz movement, has managed, against all odds, to maintain its socialist roots. They eat in the collective dining hall, enjoy Shabbat together, and promote a collective cultural life. All the work on the kibbutz is important, and there is usefulness and value in it. Everyone should be able to do the work they want to do. Beyond that, we have a collective industry, and everyone gets an equal amount of money from it. The kibbutz still maintains many agricultural initiatives, but they have also kept an eye on the future. Their success stems partly from a homegrown startup database system company, and mostly from Tama, the plastic factory that they established in 1950 as a solution for the people who were too old to work the fields. In the 80s, Tama started, found uh, in uh, Europe, the product of uh, pallet net and hay net. We are uh, now the biggest in the world in this product. Tama's success in the marketplace has allowed Mishmar Hamek to remain financially stable and independent. Coupled with a vibrant community, the kibbutz maintains a collective life true to its original socialist ideals. Meanwhile, not far away, kibbutz Ramat Manashe represents a different path. The kibbutz is no longer a collective, but rather has undergone a process of privatization over the last decade. Members of the community still own equal shares in industrial and agricultural projects. Communal investments are decided on democratically, but each member is, at this point, economically independent. Before the big change, um, you know, there was a chadar ochel, a big dining hall. All the kibbutz members used to, to meet. Well. For example, this dining hall is now closed. Our salaries go to the, to the shared kibbutz kupa, but from the, from the kibbutz kupa, uh, every member gets his own, um, own uh, uh, share. We have a community that we know each other. We feel more, responsi um, more responsible for each other. For the past decade and a half, young ideologically-minded Israelis from movements such as Hashomer Hatzair have been rejuvenating the idea of the kibbutz for the 21st century. Quiet and sleepy on a Friday afternoon, they live in small communes which share time, space, and money. These communes exist within the larger kibbutz structures that they've built, and they support the members' focus on educational and social justice work. Each commune, each group, gets um, an amount of money depending the people, the needs, and so on. It's a choice to be a socialist, and socialism it's not only a big uh, declaration, it's also a way of life. Living in a very neoliberal capitalist society in a very socialist way, uh, it's also one of a bigger difference than the old kibbutz, because the old kibbutz was part of the a whole frame of a welfare state or much more social democratic state than we live today, so it creates also many contradictions and, and difficulties. Though to onlookers, it may seem that the kibbutz is a 20th century relic, the kibbutz is an experiment that did not necessarily fail. Rather, it is in the midst of myriad and fascinating changes.